The process of customer service is being divided into three different phases. The first phase is called the pre-transaction phase. The second phase is the transaction phase. And the third phase is the post-transaction phase. Now we'll be di discussing all these phases in detail now. The first phase in the slide you can see the first phase is called the pre-transaction phase. Now what do you mean by the term pre? Pre means before, right? So pre-transaction means all those services that you do before the customer is actually ordering and the product is delivered to the customer. So, so before the product is being delivered or before the customer service process actually begins, there are certain transactions which are which come under the pre-transaction phase. So here we have mentioned these are related to the corporate policies or programs, written statements of service policy, adequacy of organizational structure and the flexibility of the organization. So we would be dealing with all these elements in detail. Moving on to the next slide, these are the different elements that come under the pre-transaction phase. So what is the first uh, point here? The first point is customer service policy statement. Now, what is a customer service policy statement? So, every company will have a document that states the customer policies that they have. These policies are related to how do you redress the customer complaints, what are the laws re regarding the replacement of the products, uh, similar issues regarding the pricing, regarding cancellations, all these things would be stated in detail in the customer service policy statement. Now these may be different for different companies based on the products that they handle, products and services that they handle. Some companies they give, they publish the statement to the customers while some others they just mention in the website where the customers can access it, they can read through before ordering the product. So the first one is customer service policy statement. What is the second point? The second point is the accessibility. Now accessibility is nothing but the ease of accessing the product. How readily available is the product in the market? That is called accessibility. Now suppose if I've already uh, known about the product and I want to order the product. I should be aware where to look up for the product and where the product would be available so that I can place my order. So that is the second point which is called accessibility. Now what is the third point? The third point talks about building the organization. So every organization will have an organizational structure right from the CEO, CFO, MDs, regional managers and then it comes to the supervisory level and finally the executive level. So this delegation of authority and communication has to be properly structured. The organization should have a clear organizational structure. The fourth point talks about structuring the service. How do you structure the service? How do you make the product available to the customer? What is the supply chain or what is the logistics process that is involved in delivering this particular product to the customer? That is structuring the service. Now the fifth point talks about educating the customer. This is about making the customer aware about the product and the company. So certain products you need to know how to use them. Most of these products which we buy like the FMCG products that you buy, you will have instructions given on the cover page. So you know how to use them. So this is basically educating the customer. So what are you doing? You're providing information to the customer about the product about the usage of the product, what to do and what not to do. All these things are informed to the customer and you are educating the customer. The last one is the system design and flexibility. So the logistic system that you have and the organizational system that you have is to be flexible. It has to be flexible so that in case of contingencies, in case of any uh, you know changes that has to be made in the structure it is flexible and all those changes can be implemented properly. So these are the elements of the pre-transaction phase that is before the transaction before the customer service process begins these are some of the elements that are very much internal to the company. The second phase is given in the second slide which is called the transaction phase. Now what is transaction phase? 
here the actual transaction is happening the product is being purchased by the customer there is an exchange of product for a particular amount for the value or for the money that is you know cost whatever is the product cost the customer pays the charge and gets the product so that is about transaction here the customer service is associated with the routine tasks which have to be performed in the logistic supply chain so earlier i said the example of amazon or flipkart when you order what happens you get updates every now and then so these are all a part of the logistics process so that the customer gets you know they have an idea as to where the product is at that particular point of time the next slide shows the different elements in transaction phase so what are the elements the first one is the reliability of order fulfillment the order or the company has to be reliable you have to trust that particular firm suppose if you have already ordered for the product and you have paid the product and the order is not fulfilled your money is already gone but you do not get the product what happens the company loses its credibility right the customer gets very much dissatisfied and he'll start complaining there is no uh, you know proper communication between the company and the customer the customer is gone forever you will not be able to retain that particular customer for your company so there has to be reliability in order fulfillment what is the second point the second point talks about order convenience how convenient is it for you how easy it is for you to get the order if it is online it is very convenient right most of us use our smartphones or laptops to give you know to place an order in a e-commerce site say in amazon amazon has an app or flipkart you have an app a smartphone app is all that is necessary for you to place an order so it is very easy so that is called convenience it is very it is made readily available for you it is made very much convenient for you to place the order what is the third point now in certain cases the customers may postpone their order it might be the entire order that they postpone or a certain portion of their order that they postpone so what happens when order is postponed when there is postponement of the order the stock has to be maintained in the company so that at the later stage it can be given to the customer or it can be delivered to the customer so the system has to be flexible you need to place that particular stock in your warehouse you need to store it for say one month or two months depending on how long it is postponed for so all this order postponement requires the company to maintain a flexible policy so that these changes can be incorporated the next point is the consistency of delivery so consistency we have already seen in the elements of customer service it has to be consistent whenever you give an order the time in which you deliver the product or the quality in which you deliver the product it has to be consistent you should not go, it, the consistency should not vary in case it varies then it can result in customer dissatisfaction the last point is product substitute suppose if a product that you are looking for is not available the company has to offer a substitute product or an alternate product which has to be readily made available to the customer so that he does not feel dissatisfied so in certain shops when you go you go looking for a particular product in a particular brand and that brand is not available so what does the shopkeeper do he tells you okay i have got products which are of a different brand almost similar price and it has all the features that you are looking for why don't you try the substitute product so it is an alternate product instead of the product that you are looking for you are getting a substitute product so that is the last point in transaction phase now what is post transaction phase so this is a very important phase see customer service does not end when you finish the sale of the product it is not over even when the product is already sold it continues till the post transaction phase so what is the meaning of post transaction means after the transaction has been done so the customer has already ordered the product he has paid for the product and he has got the product delivered customer service does not end here it still continues to the post transaction phase and some of the elements of the post transaction phase are discussed in the next slide the first one being 
information of order status. So whatever order you have made, as I said, the customer has to be informed. He has to be updated where the product has reached, when will it be delivered, what, uh, who is delivering the product. All these updates are to be given to the customer in a periodic basis. The second is customer complaints, claims and returns. In case there is an issue with the product, maybe the quality of the product or maybe the packing of the product during transportation, the product was in the packing had gone wrong and the product had spilled over or something which results in a customer complaint. How fast or how effective can you redress the complaints? So most of the companies, they have something called as a customer care. I'm sure most of you all would have called to any of the customer care services, any of the brands in the recent times. So what does the customer care do? They take your order number and they ask you what is the complaint and they give you a solution for the problem that you faced. Either they give a refund for the money that you have spent or they give you a replacement for the product or they service the product. These are some of the options that they give. But how fast can you redress the complaint is the key to customer satisfaction. The next point is product installation, commissioning and technical snacks. Suppose if you are ordering an electronic item, say a TV or a washing machine to your house and you want somebody to come down and install it for you, you cannot do it yourself. The installation and commissioning of the product also comes under the post transaction phase. Now uh, all these washing machines and uh, uh, TVs and everything, not TVs generally, washing machines and other air conditioners and all, they require servicing. So the company, one person, one representative from the company comes down and does the service for you. So all these activities, post-sale services, it comes under the post-transaction phase. The last topic is customer awareness and training. Now, even after the product has been sold, it is very important that you maintain a good relationship with the customer. The customer has to be made aware of the changes in the product or the new innovations that have been made to the product. They have to be given adequate training on how to use the product. All these things are to be done in order to maintain a good customer base. So that comes under the post transaction phase. So what are the three different phases that we saw? We saw pre transaction phase which includes all the activities that come before the product has been sold to the customer. The second one is the transaction phase where the actual order placement happens and the delivery of the product happens. That is the transaction phase and post transaction phase is once the sale is over. These are the after sale services that you offer to your customers. So these are the three elements or the three phases of customer service. <laughs>